Hi everybody and welcome back to my nail corner. Today I have a special mani planned and it is a sapphire themed mani. And the reason for this sapphire themed mani is because September 22nd was my mom's birthday and sapphire was her birthstone. Yes, I'm saying was because I lost my mom four and a half years ago. And today I wanted to tell you a bit about her while I worked on this mani. So I am using Sparkle & Co Shimmering Sapphire, which is a gorgeous navy blue with a little bit of shimmer to it, as per its name. And then I'm going to be using, oh my gosh, I always mess up the name of this. I think it's Take Me to the Ocean is the really sparkly color, which as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to use because it screams sapphire. And then I am going to be using Revel's Champion, which is part of their Mirror Chrome collection, so it can be used as a dip, but I am going to be chroming it over a Triple D um, gel base. I'm using their new black, I think it's called Into the Night, um, gel as the base for that chrome, so you'll see that coming up. And because I haven't chromed before, I will try to make sure to give step-by-step -step instructions when we get there, but a little bit of um, this video is just going to be me chatting at you guys, so I hope you don't mind listening and hearing a little bit of a story. At the very end, I'm including a couple of pictures of me and my mom, one from when I was really little, one from my 30th birthday, which was my last birthday with her, and one from my wedding day, which was 13 years ago. So I hope you take a second to look at those and just think of the special people in your life and love on them a little bit extra. So I'm going to try not to get emotional, but you know, I'm talking about my mom. So that happens. Anyway, on um, September 3rd, actually, uh, five years ago, gosh, the time flies by in weird ways. Um, five years ago, I went with my mom to the oncologist. She had had a bunch of tests that week, or I guess the 10 days prior, because she hadn't been feeling well for quite some time. And finally, we had all kinds of test results in, and we were told to go meet with this oncologist because the doctors we had seen prior to that were pretty confident that it was cancer and, and referred her to the oncologist. So I went with her and my dad, and we were ready to go and hear what the plan was. We knew we were going to be facing, you know, probably chemo and all of the hard, hard things that come with that. So I had sat down with my mom the night before and made a list of questions. She wanted to know, you know, if she could be with her grandkids. She had five grandkids and she wanted to know if she was going to lose her hair and just all kinds of questions you would have if you were facing that. And when we went to that doctor, he sat down and he said that her cancer had spread to her liver, her lymph nodes and her lungs um, and it was colon cancer and that made her stage four and that he said with chemo every other week she had maybe two years with us and if she decided not to pursue any treatment that we probably had about six months. So we threw our questions out the window because they were useless to us. My dad couldn't catch his breath and had to leave the room. My mom looked at the doctor and said, it's okay. I've lived a good life and I know where I'm going. <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe she was saying what she was saying and yet that was so my mom. But she was 59 years old and she was confident in her salvation. She loves Jesus, loved Jesus. <laughs> she surely loves him now. She's with him. And um, yeah, so she faced it with confidence like she would anything else. And we left that doctor's office having to call family and friends and tell them the devastating news. So that was, that was a rough day. And that was five years ago. Um, we had six months and two days with her. She decided not to pursue any treatment. She didn't want to have to um, deal with all the sickness that involved chemo and know that that was going to be the rest of her life living that way. Um, and just like prolong the agony. So she had decided that she didn't want to do that so um, I spent the next six months kind of taking care of my mom she had just they had just downsized and moved about 
I don't know, three tenths of a mile from my house. So I was able to be with her just about every day. And I had a four month old and a two and a half year old when this diagnosis came in. So my six months were busy and overwhelming and emotional, but we got through, we got through together. And on March 5th of 2016, um, we lost her. So um, all of that is tragically sad and I just, I feel for anybody that's had to live through it and uh, I'm sorry if you have because I feel your pain and just nobody else should know that pain in my opinion. It's just something you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. However, I would love to spread some um, knowledge, some education on the topic, um, learning from it kind of mistakes made. My mom had not gone for a lot of doctor's visits. She really was into like just natural care and, you know, homeopathics and just healthy diet and just taking care of herself that way, which was great. But she didn't get into the doctor often. She was 59 and had not had a colonoscopy, which routinely you should have by the time you're age 50. And I think now they're even recommending it sooner than that. Um, that being said, we don't, you know, we can't go back in time. We don't know for sure if she had gone and had a colonoscopy nine years sooner, if they would have found something or if it would have come in that time. Like we, there's just, you know, there's no way of knowing these things. However, it has made me a huge advocate for preventative care. Um, in this family, we don't miss well checks. We don't skip routine checkups. We don't skip tests. We don't skip anything. If you have any questions about your health, anything that just stands out as unusual, see your doctor, ask for the test, advocate for your own health. Because a lot of times, you know, I, I love doctors and I have, I love my doctor. She's super proactive with me and takes everything very seriously, but, but you know your body better than anyone else. And I just, um, I just encourage everybody to do all the preventative care things, take care of yourself. It's, I, I do it because I don't want to put my kids through the loss of a parent if it can at all be prevented, right? Like things happen and, and you can't prevent them, but some things we can, we can catch early enough to treat. And so I just encourage you all to just take care of yourselves, you know, take care of your parents, push your, your parents to not, you know, neglect these things and keep them around for as long as possible. My dad's still with me. He was 10 years older than my mom. We always kind of thought we'd lose dad first, but he's 73 now. And I'll tell you what, like he goes to all the things because I won't let him get away with skipping anything. So take care of your loved ones and and love on the loved ones that you still have with you. I can look back at the 30 years I had my mom with no regret because I talked to her every day. I saw her almost daily. I was with her as much as humanly possible and I could never look back and I could always wish for more time, obviously, but I truly don't feel like I wasted any of the time I had with her. So pick up the phone, call your mom, call your dad, call your people that you love and tell them that you love them because everybody needs to hear that. So thank you for listening to my story. I do have another Sapphire Manny planned to share with you guys on my Wednesday upload. Um, so stay tuned for that and it'll be a little bit more lighthearted. So again, I know it's, it's hard to hear sad things, but I just want to bring awareness. So into chroming now the nail things <laughs> um i applied base and cured for 30 seconds and now i'm doing two, i'm gonna do two layers of the black i don't know that that's fully necessary and you can do this over dip powder so if you don't have gel and don't want to go that route that's fine um i'm going to do a video in the near future doing chrome without gel at all there is a um, like regular nail polish you can buy. So if you don't like to use a lamp or don't have one or don't want to use gel for whatever reason, some people have allergies to gel. I'm going to do an upload that shows how to do it with this particular polish. So I'm sorry if you're not into the gels, but that's what I used in this video. So I did two coats of the black to make it nice and opaque. And then I go in with top coat. Um, you put the top coat on and you do a flash cure. Now, the tricky part of this is it's a little different in every lamp. I did mine for 15 seconds. I have a 72 watt UV LED combo lamp. So 
If you have the same or if you're looking to get one, I'll try to remember and link it below in my description box. It was recently on sale for like $18.99 or something on Amazon. It's a really good deal and it's a great lamp. So I flash cure for 15 seconds and then you come back and literally just rub this on. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? From the very first time I saw this, I was like, this is sapphire. That's a sapphire right there. Um, so you just rub it on. You can use your finger. You can use an eyeshadow applicator, which I do come in with in a minute here just to get like around the edges closer because my finger wasn't like rubbing around my cuticle line and sidewalls super well. Um, but it just chromes super easily. If you're struggling with this, it's probably because the timing of your cure is off. So um, mess around with it on like a swatch stick. Maybe do it like if it's tacky at all you need it a few seconds longer and then if it's not rubbing in at all it's you probably cured too long so play around with it until you find the right amount but that's the right amount for my lamp um, and it works beautifully so I thought it turned out really pretty and then I go ahead and top this off with gel top coat I'm gonna finish off this mani because I'm gonna like go and file and all that stuff come back and top it all off and then I'm going to have some final thoughts for you guys. So stay tuned and thanks if you're still with me at this point. I know I did a lot of talking. I've applied my base gel and I'm going to go ahead and cure that but I just want to emphasize the importance of clear capping a mani like this I actually probably should have done it twice because um, I was I was hitting in a couple places the glitter and turned it silver in one or two spots hopefully it's not too noticeable but um, if you have a glitter that's just at all 
at all chunky like maybe consider a second especially because I was using Virgo and gem base and that's so thin if you're using a thicker base then one clear cap is probably fine but I probably should have done two over those glitter nails with a, a super thin base like Virgo and gem so now I'm applying my gel top it made this super shiny and gorgeous and I, I just love this Manny it screamed sapphire to me I I really enjoyed it and it, it definitely made me think of you know that be beautiful September birthstone so if you have a birthday in September consider a sapphire mani because it's gorgeous anyway I'm finishing off this mani with cuticle candy as always or cu yes cuticle candy from candy skincare I'm always like did I say the wrong thing the brand name or the product anyway I love this stuff so if you haven't tried it consider it I have a couple discount codes down there in the bottom five dollars off a of first order or 15% off at uh, candy skincare so drop over to their website and check it out Again, I have a finished Manny picture for you guys and then a few pictures of my mom and me. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you get to love on your loved ones and I will see you in my next video. Thanks guys. Bye now.